Two Bible Study with the Feed My Sheep Foundation. And on this video, we're going to do a, uh, a Captain's Voice series revelation. And it's going to be a part two. Uh, we did part one, and it's entitled The uh, Kingdom of God Business. And it's going to be Kingdom of God Business, part two. We've already did part one. Just going uh, more in detail into what uh, the business of the heavens and the holy God of heaven has uh, called us into. You know, once you come into the kingdom of God, once you've been baptized with the Holy Ghost, we are all called into uh, the ministry of reconciliation. Um, and by reconciliation, because, you know, that's the same ministry that reached out to us, okay, whenever, uh, you know, an individual goes into the house of the Lord, or if they uh, go into a place that is considered the house of the Lord, where the Spirit is, or anywhere where the Holy Spirit is, if you meet a person, however God places that uh, interaction, that contact, that moment in time for you to come into the kingdom, it's done by the Holy Spirit. It's all done by the Holy Spirit. God just uses people, we're his vessels, he uses in order to make it come to pass and make it happen. However, we all, once we come into the kingdom, we are a part of that same uh, calling and ministry, the, recon the ministry of reconciliation. So I'm going to continue this uh, kingdom of God's business revelation and start with 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and starting with verse 17. He says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things passed away, all things become new. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Okay? So that's where Paul makes this notation at in the book of Corinthians because he's talking to the people in Corinthians who have been saved, who have been caught into the kingdom they have accepted Christ Jesus as their personal savior coming to the knowledge that they recognize and realize that God is the almighty God of the heavens and the earth and their creator and so uh, now Paul is uh, admonishing them and explaining to them you know what goes on after that what's the next step and that is to recognize and realize that you've been place into a ministry of reconciliation where we are reconciling the world back to heaven okay back to God pulling the world out of darkness and into the light with the heavenly father and helping them to become more aware of who they are and how God created them and the fact that God the heavenly father created them Jehovah Jireh and uh, to know about his kingdom uh, how it is established, the government of his kingdom, his statutes, his commandments, and just to uh, go into relationship with him. That's all about the reconciliation. So going on to verse 19, it says, To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not in putting their trespasses to them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation, okay, which would be, the preaching of the gospel regarding Christ Jesus and how Christ Jesus came into the earth to be the intercessor for our sins and to be the one to unite us back to the Father as uh, and to make us whole, you know, with him. Because without the intercessory of Christ Jesus, we would, you know, be not at peace with God. And so that's the main purpose of everything. So then he goes on, now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's uh, stead on his behalf be reconciled to God. For he has made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that's Christ Jesus, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Okay? So that's just going over and helping us to realize and understand, uh, like verse 19 says, uh, has, we have been committed unto us the word of reconciliation, and he has given to us all that comes into 
the kingdom. He's given us all the ministry of reconciliation. We have that ministry within us and able to go forward and to talk to someone regarding the kingdom of heaven and to give them uh, information regarding that. So the next book I'm laying over to as we take a look at the kingdom of God business is going to be in the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians and uh, chapter 4 and I'm going to start with a verse 1 uh, this is Paul talking to the Ephesians that have been sanctified uh, they have been uh, converted into the kingdom of God they are now celestial beings in the earth and uh, as a part of God's kingdom as a celestial being you operate in many uh, under many titles but you operate based on the kingdom of of God, the heaven, you know, the heavens, and you are uh, led by the heavens because of the, the Holy Spirit. So, chapter 4, verse 1, he says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation you've been called to, with all lowness and meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. For there is one body, one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. And uh, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So wherefore he says, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? For he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all the heavens, that he might feel all things. And uh, verse 11 says he gave some apostles. He gave out some gifts. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. And why does he do that? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And for what reason? Till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, <clears throat> a perfect meaning mature, growing in maturity in Christ and in God and the heavenly Father and in the heavens, and unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And the reason that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. And then it says, from whom the whole body is joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making uh, make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as the Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, uh, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. And I'm going to stop right there. Let me see if there's another verse I need to go into. Uh, yeah, let me keep going. Verse 19, because he's talking about, you know, those that have been alienated from God, the Gentiles and how they walk in the darkness of their mind. And they're also, he says, they're past feeling, having given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness and greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. So it be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. So put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Okay? 
uh, verse 30, I'm going to go down here to verse 30. It says, uh, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed to the day of redemption, and let all bitterness and wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking, be put away from you with all malice. Be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. And this is to the kingdom, okay? So we want to go back up to verse 11, or verse 10, actually. When he ascended, he that ascended is the same also that uh, ascended up far above all the heavens, that he might feel all things, okay? And these are the gifts that he gave, the fivefold ministry unto the body, okay, unto the earth, unto the, it's a part, it is the kingdom. But it is given into the earth to bring forth God's glory, to bring forth heaven through each and one of these gifts. Uh, because they're part of the kingdom of God. They're part of heaven. So they're operated in an operation through the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, whenever you begin to take and go and walk in your vocation, you begin to do the kingdom of God business. Okay? which is a vocation, as we have learned from the beginning uh, of this chapter, in verse 1, the vocation wherewith you have been called. And then he goes into listing all five of those vocations. And why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the working, a work of the ministry, for the building up of the saints, so that they can become more aware, more knowledgeable of who God is, of who heaven is, why heaven is, and what heaven is about, and all information that pertains to God and heaven. The gifts of God and um, everything that just pertains to the body of Christ. Okay, so that is going to conclude the Captain's Voice Kingdom of God Business Part 2. No doubt there will be more parts to this study because we just want to make sure we touch base on everything regarding the gifts and uh, how it makes the operation of the gifts uh, and all that God has for each individual that comes into the kingdom to be responsible for. Okay, because he does tell us too, too much is given, much is required. And um, that is what he says, okay? Therefore, God bless you, and I will look forward to more revelations and more revealings as we continue to go forward on the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study Video Channel.